Hi guys and welcome back to the Crochet Toy YouTube channel. In today's video I'm bringing you a special new pattern um, and this is for one of the starters from the new Pokemon games that just got announced, so Violet and Scarlet. And I decided to start off with Quaxley first because I think he might be who I choose when I get the new game uh, when it does eventually come out. So this is what he looks like. And this is kind of my interpretation of him, and I say that because I know that the top of him, so like the hat slash hair piece or whatever um, on the photo doesn't look like what I've created. And that's just because I spent so long trying to work out a way to make it look like it does in the photo and I honestly just couldn't do it. So I decided instead to kind of, like I say, create my own interpretation of it and give him a little hat instead that's the same colour and got that little W um, symbol on it. And then also the good thing about this is you can take off the hat too, so you can just have a bald Quaxley if you prefer as well. Uh, and you could also just decide not to make the hat at all, or you could do whatever you want to do on the head to make it look more like Quaxley actually does if you're a really uh, skilled crocheter and you know what technique should I should have used there. But um, for me, it was just, I was getting too frustrated with it. So I decided that, you know, let's go with something a bit more simple and let's give him a little hat like this. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in finding out how to make Quaxley, then please carry on watching this video. The written instructions will be available on my blog as always, and that'll be linked down below. Um, and other than that, I don't really think there's much more to say on this. So let's get straight into what you'll be needing for this tutorial. For this tutorial you'll be needing, Aran weight yarn in yellow, dark blue, light blue and white. You'll be needing some stuffing, you'll probably need more than this but this is just to demonstrate. You'll be needing your crochet hook, I've got a 4mm crochet hook to go with my Aran weight yarn but you can size up or size down as required. I'll be uh, using a stitch marker, I've just got an off cut of yarn that I'm using for this. Also you'll need a yarn needle for sewing everything together. You'll need some black embroidery thread for adding uh, the details to the face and you'll also need some fabric glue to help keep them in place and also to glue down the felt. You'll need a very small amount of white felt to just uh, add details to the eyes. You'll need some scissors and you might also want some pins for sewing everything, for keeping everything together, sorry, when you're sewing it together. So that's everything that you'll be needing for this tutorial. We're going to start by crocheting the head, so grab your white yarn. For round one we're going to do six single crochets in a magic circle. So that's the end of round one, you should have um, six single crochets all the way around. Then for round two we're going to increase in each single crochet. So that's the end of round two, you should now have 12 single crochets all the way around. I'm going to talk you through uh, the next few rounds now as it's just standard increases and in increments of six. So for round three you're going to do single crochet increase and repeat that five more times to get you to 18 single crochets at the end of the round. Round four, two single crochet increase, repeat that five more times to get you to 24 single crochets at the end of the round. Round five, three single crochet increase, repeat that five more times to get you to 30 single crochets at the end of the round. Round six, four single crochet increase, repeat that five more times to get you to 36 single crochets at the end of the round. Round seven, single crochet all the way around. Round eight, five single crochet increase, repeat that five more times to get you to 42 single crochets at the end of the round. Round nine, single crochet all the way around. Round 10, six single crochet increase, repeat that five more times to get you to 48 single crochets at the end of the round. And then rounds 11 to 20, single crochet all the way around. So I'll meet you when you're ready to start round 21 as we're gonna start doing some decreases. I'm now ready to start round 21, so I'm going to start off by doing six single crochets. And 
and then I'm going to do a decrease. I'm just going to repeat that pattern five more times and that's going to get me down to 42 single crochets at the end of round 21. I'll also just talk you through the next few rounds because again it's just standard decreases now in increments of six. So for round 22 you're going to do five single crochet decrease, repeat that five more times to get you to 36 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 23, four single crochet decrease, repeat that five more times to get you 30 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 24, three single crochet decrease, repeat that five more times to get you to 24 single crochets at the end of the round. And then round 25, two single crochet decrease, repeat that five more times to get you to 18 single crochets at the end of the round. I'll meet you at the end of round 25 as we then need to stuff the head. So I got to the end of round 25 and this is a reminder to add stuffing at this point. So this is what mine is looking like now. So for round 26 you're simply going to start by doing a single crochet and then you're going to do a decrease. And you're just going to repeat that pattern five more times and that'll get you down to 12 single crochets at the end of round 26. So I'll meet you at that point. Okay, so once you've got to the end of round 26, I am just going to talk you through the next few rounds because, um, again, it's nothing new that you haven't seen um, previously. So for rounds 27 to 28, you're going to single crochet all the way around. Round 29, single crochet increase. Repeat that pattern five more times to get you up to 18 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 30, two single crochet increase. Repeat that pattern five more times to get you to 24 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 31, three single crochet increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 30 single crochets at the end of the round. Rounds 32 to 34, single crochet all the way around. Round 35, four single crochet increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 36 single crochets at the end of the round. Rounds 36 to 39, single crochet all the way around. And then round 40, four single crochet decrease. Repeat that five more times to get you down to 30 single crochets at the end of the round. Um, when we get to the end of round 40, we're then going to split the um, bottom of the body in two to create two kind of like um, leg stumps, I guess you could call them, uh, that we're then going to attach the webbed feet to when we make those. It will make a bit more sense hopefully when I um, show you. So I'll meet you when you finish round 40 and we'll start that together. Okay, so I finished round 40 and this is what it's looking like now. So as you can see, this is the body that we're creating here. And then obviously we've got the head on top. Um, one little tip for you is when we do get to the part where we're going to start stuffing the body, just make sure that you push some of that stuffing up into the neck as well. Otherwise, you will end up with quite a floppy head. Um, so that's just a little tip for you there. Also, if you did end up with a floppy head still, even after stuffing, um, you can definitely reattach some white yarn and just do a bit of sewing around the neck to um, secure it a bit more. But um, I guess you can look at that when we get to that stage. So for now, what we're going to do... So we've just finished round 40 and this is our final decrease here. So what we need to do now is we actually need to chain five before we start anything else. So one, two, three, four, five. And that chain is going to be treated as if these are single crochets really when we come to um, doing the rounds for the little leg stumps. So once I've done that, I'm also going to count 16 single crochets after the last stitch that we did in round 40. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And this one here is where we're going to start round 1 for the first leg. So I'm just going to mark that to remind myself. So yeah, once you've done this, um, come back and let's start round 1. So for round one, as I mentioned, we're going to start off in this stitch here. So we're going to just do a single crochet in here and I'm going to mark that stitch. And then what I'm going to do all the way around is we're going to be doing two single crochet decrease. So this is my second single crochet and then this is my decrease. So I'm just going to... Uh, carry on doing that pattern all the way around and 
when you're doing your fourth decrease here, you'll notice that you're going to have to start including the chain as if it were a single crochet. So I'm going to start my decrease in this single crochet and then I'm going to do my next part of the decrease in the chain like this. And then I just need to do one more um, set of two single crochets and a decrease. So one... Two single crochets and then I'm going to do my final decrease in the chain so decrease across this chain okay so that's the end of round one and you should have 15 uh, single crochets all the way around so for round two we're just going to do single crochet decrease all the way around I'm not going to bother marking my first stitch now because it's a bit more obvious um, where the stitches are in round two, but feel free to do that if you want to. Okay, so that's the end of round two and you should have 10 single crochets all the way around now. Now we're going to finish off with round three, so we're just going to decrease all the way around. Okay, so that's the end of round three. You should have five single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five. So then you just need to cut your yarn and leave a bit of a tail. I'm actually running out of my white, so um, I didn't actually need to cut my yarn. I This is all I have left. So that was lucky that I managed to finish this. But um, yeah, if you need to cut yours, then do that now. And then we're just going to close up the hole in the same way that we would normally. So give me one second, I'll get my yarn needle and then we'll do that together. So I got my yarn needle and now I'm just going to close up the hole by weaving um, the tail into the front loops of each of those five stitches. So if I don't drop it, that'll be good. So one, two, three, four. five and then you just pull tightly and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, weave this yarn tail into the leg once it's actually all stuffed and done so I'm actually just going to leave the tail hanging for now so you can do the same I mean you can um, push it in at this point but I like to kind of um, entangle it within the um, stuffing inside because I feel like that makes it a bit more secure so that's my plan there and as you can see so we kind of have um, this little leg stump here i hope you can kind of understand what we're trying to achieve here so um one thing that you might also want to do at this point is add some stuffing to the body so i'm just going to start doing that and i'm going to remove this um this stitch marker that i forgot from before so i might just zoom out actually i'm just going to add some stuffing into the hole that we currently have try and get a little bit of that stuffing onto the um, leg stump that we've just done although obviously there's not much space there so there's not much stuffing you can squeeze into there and as I mentioned before don't forget to push a little bit of stuffing up into the neck too because um, that will hopefully make it a little bit more secure so it's not like uh, super wobbly at the top so I'm just going to do some of that you'll probably need to like readjust as you go and like keep playing around with it and making sure that you're happy with the placement of the stuffing but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for now so uh, now we're ready to move on to the other legs let's do that next 
So the first thing we want to do is to reattach our white yarn and we're going to be reattaching our white yarn into the single crochet after the final single crochet from uh, round 40. So I'm just going to turn my work like this. So as you can see, this um, here was the last single crochet that was worked into for round 40 because you can see here, this is where we did that final decrease. So I'm going to reattach my yarn into the next stitch here. And once you've done that, we're ready to start round one. So the rounds for the second leg are going to be exactly the same as for the first. So we're going to start off by doing two single crochet decrease all the way around. Now this bit might be a little bit tricky, but um, this isn't actually a chain or a single crochet. This is actually um, something that we don't need to work into. So for the fourth decrease, you're going to go into this next single crochet. That's easy enough. And then you're going to turn your work so that you can kind of see the other side of the chain that we were working into for the other leg. So sorry, I hope you can kind of see that. So that's the final chain there. Hopefully you can kind of see where I'm pointing at. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is the first chain here. So we just need to go in here and do a decrease. It's actually not the end of the world if you don't go into the right stitches um, on round one, to be honest, um, because what we can do is if there's any holes that are appearing, you can just go back in and um, sew them up with some white yarn at the end. So don't worry too much, but... Um, yeah, hopefully this view is kind of helpful. So one, two, and then the final decrease here. And another little tip as well is that um, we are going to end up with a bit of a gap at this point here. So you might want to also pull through a loop in this stitch here and then do kind of like um, almost like a decrease across three stitches like this and that's hopefully going to reduce the gaps that you see in this leg but again don't worry if you um, can't really work out how to do that or um, you forget to do that we can always um, sew up any um, gaps at the end and also don't forget it's quite good that we're working with white yarn so even if the stuffing does show for a little bit it's also white so it doesn't really matter it would be more of an issue if we we're working with black or another dark color so yeah don't worry too much about that so that's the end of round one i'm not going to show you rounds two and three again because we've already done them before but just to remind you round two is a single crochet decrease all the way around to get you down to 10 single crochets and then round three is decrease all the way around to get you down to five single crochets one thing i will just say is um, at the end of round two you might want to top up your stuffing a little bit because that's probably going to be your last opportunity before there's nowhere really to add stuffing so yeah don't forget to do that but um, i'll meet you at the end of round three and then we can close up the hole and then we can move on to something else. So I've got to the end of round three. This is what it's looking like. So hopefully you can kind of see what I me meant now about like the little leg stumps. It just creates kind of like a little um, domed shape here that, um, I don't know, it just kind of matches up with how Quaxley actually looks. So um, yeah, that's why we're doing this. Um, just to say as well, if you've struggled with this at all, um, you could just close off the body in a standard way that we would normally do so after the end of round 40 you could then uh, decrease down to 24 then 18 then 12 then 6 and just close off like that but um i just wanted to try and add this little effect because i thought it would look a bit better so um yeah but i understand it can be a little bit fiddly but anyway hopefully you've managed to get to the end of round three with me and what we can do is just cut our yarn again and do the exact same thing that we did on the other side so just close up that hole and then we can weave in our yarn tails and then we can, like I say, move on to something else. So. Okay, 
okay so pull and then that should hopefully close up and then i'm just going to weave that yarn tail through to a random white stitch don't pull too too tightly because otherwise you'll lose um that definition of the little leg stump there so just gently pull i'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm going to cut those yarn tails and then I'm just going to see how it's looking. You might want to, like I say, play around with the stuffing a bit, make sure it's sitting the way that you want it to. Um, and you're also probably going to want to have a think about which side is going to be your front and which side is going to be your back at this point. So I'm having a look at mine and I think this side probably looks better than the other side so this is going to be my front and I'm just going to uh, remind myself of that with a pin in the front so you might want to do the same but um yeah so now we're ready to move on to the next part so the next thing we're going to make is the blue feet so um these are going to go like here and there's going to be a little leg to attach that to the body as well um and i've obviously gone ahead and just made one to show you what it looks like so how we make this is we're going to make these two little toes to start off with and then we're going to join them together in a later round and then close it off at the back here and we're not going to add any stuffing we're just going to keep it flat and unstuffed like this so the first thing that we need to do is then make these two little toes to join together so if you grab your light blue yarn we're just going to start off by doing six single crochets in a magic circle so that's round one and then for round two you're just going to single crochet all the way around Okay, so that's the first toe done so we just need to cut our yarn now leave a little bit of a tail but not too much then just repeat those two rounds once more but make sure to leave the yarn on your hook so i'll meet you when you've done that okay so i've done all those steps again and i've got another toe on my hook so we're going to join the two toes together in round three so to do that we're going to start off by doing three single crochets into the toe that's currently on your hook and i'm going to mark the first one Then we're going to work six single crochets around the second toe. And then we're going to work three single crochets in the other toe again and if you're not sure where to start just count back three after the um stitch marker so one two three so be this one okay so we're now at the end of round three, you should have joined your two toes together and you should have 12 single crochets all the way around. I'm just going to talk you through the remaining rounds now. So round four, you're going to single crochet all the way around. 
round five, four single crochet decrease and repeat that again to get you to ten single crochets at the end of the round, round six to seven single crochet all the way around and then round eight decrease all the way around to get you down to five single crochets so I'll meet you at the end of round eight. So I got to the end of round eight and this is what my foot looks like now so I'm going to just cut my yarn leaving just enough of a tail so that I can um, close up the hole here but we won't be needing this for anything else. So. Let's close up the hole. And then you can just weave your yarn tail through. Snip that. So now we've got our two feet. The next thing to make is the little leg that's going to be attached to the feet. So let's get started with that now. So I've already made one as you can see here, so there's a tail at either side so that we can um, sew one of the ends to the body and one of the ends to the foot. So it's just going to go like that, it's just going to be sewn like that on the sort of back of the foot like this. Uh, and then that's just going to be sewn onto the body like that and we're going to obviously need to have two of these. So uh, let's make the second one together. So if you grab your light blue yarn again, we're going to start off this time by chaining five and don't forget to leave a tail because um, you can use this for sewing later on. So it's just quite convenient to leave a tail at, at this end as well. So I'm going to do chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And then for round one, so starting from um, the first chain that we did, we're just going to single crochet all of the way around so one two three four five so that's the end of round one you should have five single crochets all the way around and what you can do at this point as you can see the tails kind of come out this side here but we want it to be at this end here so i'm just gonna um push my crochet hook through so that we can see where the gap is and then i'm gonna put my hook through this gap i'm just gonna pull the tail through this hole so that it's in the right position ready for sewing so just like that so i'm gonna leave that there now so now once you've uh, done your first round, you just want to do three more rounds of single crocheting all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of round four. Okay, so at the end of round four, you should have something that looks a bit like this. So now you're just going to cut your yarn, leaving a tail for sewing as well at this end. So we've got two tails for sewing either end of the leg. So now let me show you how we sew these to the feet. So I've already sewn one of the legs to one of the feet. So let's do the other one now. So it's up to you whether you want to sew the narrower end or the wider end to the foot. I'm going to sew the narrower end because I just prefer how it looks, but it doesn't make a massive difference. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that. So I'm not going to be using any pins for this. I'm just going to be roughly positioning the leg where I want it to go. And then I'm just going to be um, basically whip stitching all the way around. So just kind of hold it and it doesn't really matter if you don't exactly go into like where the chain five was. You could even sew a bit higher um, and sew that down to make the leg a little bit shorter if you wanted to. I'm just going to be trying to sew into the chain five.
Okay, so I've sewn all the way around now. I'm just going to see what it's looking like. So that's what it looks like once it's sewn down and then you can just weave your yarn tail through the back like this Whoops. and then you can just snip that so now it's time to sew the legs to the body so these are my two feet and the legs and now we're going to sew oops, these parts here to the body so let's do that now as you can see I've sewn down one of the legs so let's do the next one together. Again I'm not going to be using pins I'm just going to be placing the leg where I think it should go and then I'm just going to be whip stitching around. Okay, so that's the first time going around. I'm just going to check that the positioning is okay, but it looks like it is. If it isn't, you can always unpick your stitches and redo it again. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do, because when you sew around just once, it is pretty floppy. Whereas on this leg, I've sewn it twice and it's a lot less movable. So I'm just going to be sewing around again, taking some of these lower loops this time. Okay, and then I'm just going to check that again. Yep, I think I'm happy with that. So then all I'm going to do is just weave my yarn tail through the bottom of the foot and then I'll just snip that um, and that'll be that. So once you've sewn both of your legs down, come back and I think the next thing we'll make is the wings. As always, I've made one wing in advance. This is what it's going to look like. And I will just talk you through the rounds because they're pretty straightforward. So round one, six single crochets in a magic circle. Round two, single crochet all the way around. Round three, increase all the way around. Round four, single crochet all the way around. Round five, single crochet increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 18 single crochets at the end of the round. Round six to seven, single crochet all the way around. Round eight, seven single crochet decrease. Seven single crochet decrease to get you down to 16 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 9, single crochet all the way around. Round 10, 6 single crochet decrease, 6 single crochet decrease to get you down to 14 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 11, single crochet all the way around. Round 12, 5 single crochet decrease, 5 single crochet decrease to get you down to 12 single crochets at the end of the round. Round 13, single crochet all the way around. Round 14, 4 single crochet decrease, 4 single crochet decrease to get you down to 10 single crochets at the end of the round. And then finally round 15, single crochet all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of round 15 as we'll then need to slip stitch across to close the wing and then we'll again need to sew these to the body. So once you finish round 15, you're just going to do five slip stitches across the top to close. Just like that, then you can just flatten the piece and then just cut your yarn leaving a tail for sewing. So once you've got two of these, come back here and we'll sew them to the body. I'm going to sew my second wing down with you now. So once again, I'm not using any pins. I'm just going to be um, just 
holding the wing where I want it positioned and then whip stitching along the top to start with. And then I'm just going to check the positioning is fine. Okay, then I'm going to stitch down a couple of the back stitches as well. And then I'm just going to bring my yarn tail to the front and stitch down a few stitches of the wing at the front as well. And then when you've done that, just again, um, push your yarn tail through to the back and then you can just snip that. Okay, so those are my two wings sewn down now, as you can see. So um, now we can move on to the next part. We're going to make the beak now. So if you grab your yellow yarn for round one, we're actually going to be crocheting around a foundation chain to create the round so I'll show you how to do that so if we start by chaining six and then starting from the second chain from hook we're going to be doing four single crochets and then an increase in the final chain I'm going to be working in the back loops here but you can work in these front loops um, it will just slightly change the appearance And then we're going to work round the other side of the foundation chain and do the exact same pattern again. So four single crochets and then an increase. So that's the end of round one, you should have 12 single crochets all the way around. So I'm just going to talk you through the remaining rounds of the beak, because this is the hardest part once you've crocheted around the foundation chain, it's pretty straightforward after this. So for round two, you're going to single crochet all the way around. Round three, two single crochet increase and repeat that pattern three more times to get you to, four, to 16 single crochets at the end of round three. Round four, single crochet all the way around. Round five, three single crochet increase. Repeat that three more times to get you to 20 single crochets at the end of the round. Round six, single crochet all the way around. And then round seven, single crochet increase and repeat that nine more times to get you to 30 single crochets at the end of round seven. So I'll meet you at that point as we then need to uh, sew the beak to the face. So I got to the end of round seven. This is what the beak's looking like. So now I'm just going to cut my yarn, leaving a fairly long tail for sewing as we need to sew all the way around the beak. 
And I'm just going to pull that tail through. So now I'm going to pin this to the uh, to the face and then I'll show you how to sew it down. Before I start um, sewing the beak down, I am just going to finish off with a fake single crochet for additional neatness. So if you don't know how to do this, just turn your work like this. Then skip the next single crochet and go into the one after that. Pull your yarn tail through that um, single crochet. Then go back to that final single crochet from the final round in the front loop only from our current perspective. And then pull that yarn tail through here. Then as you can see that creates a fake single crochet on top of the real existing one underneath and it just makes it harder to tell where the round finished and that will hopefully make it look a little bit neater when you're sewing the beak to the face so let's do that now. I've just pinned the beak down to the head as you can see this is what it looks like from the side and I am just going to be whip stitching around to sew this so I'll just show you the first few stitches. So yeah, I'm just going to be doing that all the way around, although I will just stop when I have a few stitches left to do and I'll add some stuffing, so I'll meet you at that point. So as you can see, with a few stitches left to do, I've added some stuffing, so just make sure that you do the same and then continue sewing the beak down. I finished sewing the beak down, so this is what it looks like from the side and from the front. And now I'm just going to weave my yarn tail through and then snip that. So I think what I'm going to do next is to add some uh, black detail to the beak. So I've just used a bit of black embroidery thread and added just a couple of lines towards the end of the beak there. And that's probably how I'm going to leave it. So uh, you might want to do the same or feel free to leave it if you um, prefer the look without the kind of uh, lines here. So the next thing we're going to make is the eyes. So the first thing to make for that is the uh, dark blue main kind of eye shape. So I've made one of these and I'll make the other one with you now. So if you just grab your dark blue yarn, we're going to be using the same technique as we used at the beginning of the beak. So we're going to be crocheting around a foundation chain. So we're going to start off by doing five single, uh, five chains, sorry. One, two three, four, five, and then we're gonna, starting from the second chain from hook, do three single crochets and then an increase. And again, I'm gonna be working in these back loops. And then we're going to work around the other side of the foundation chain and repeat that pattern again. So three single crochets and an increase. Okay, and that is it. It's just the one round there and that's it. So we're just going to cut our yarn leaving a tail for sewing. And then as with the beak, I'm going to finish off with a fake single crochet for neatness. The final thing I'm going to do before I start sewing this down is to finish off with a fake single crochet. And it's very similar to how I did it for the beak, except this time instead of skipping the next single crochet and going into one after that, I'm actually going to go into the next single crochet and then pull that tail through then go back to the final single crochet and go into the front loop only from our current perspective pull that tail through and what that's done is that's actually created an additional single crochet an additional fake single crochet in the round so as you can see i'll just count all the way around one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now we have whereas before we had ten single crochets and the only reason i'm doing this in a slightly different way this time is just because um 
that round was already quite tight for the eye so if we did the single crochet over this one I think it would just look very tight and um, not very neat and that would defeat the whole purpose of doing a fake single crochet. So you might want to do the same thing just to make it look a little bit neater and once you have two eyes come back and we'll sew them together. Before I show you how to uh, sew the eyes down I just wanted to show you that I actually ended up adding a couple of extra lines here because I felt that um, Quaxley actually needed like a mouth because it he didn't really have an expression previously so that's just what I've done here and all I'm going to do to keep the shape of the line is I'm going to get my fabric glue and I'm going to add a little dab of fabric glue whoops that's too much just going to wipe that in a sec so I'm just going to add a little dab about here and then I'm going to place the embroidery thread on top of that and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side And that's all I'm going to do. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you that in case you were like, when did he get a mouth? Um, so yeah, let's sew down the eyes now. Instead of doing a whip stitch when I sew down the eyes, I'm doing a running stitch instead. So that means I'm going into a white stitch like this. And then I'm going to go into another white stitch and then back out through a blue stitch. And then blue, then white. And then white, then blue. I'm just going to do that all the way around, so I'll meet you when I've finished that. I've sewn both the eyes down, so I'm just going to weave the yarn tail through the eye, and then I'll just cut that. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Once you've sewn down the eyes you're going to want to cut a couple of um, white ovals out and then just glue those onto the eyes so you can use any fabric glue you want. I'm going to be using my Fabri-Tac so that is the next step. The next step is optional but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a black border around the eyes using some black embroidery thread so I'm just going to bring the black embroidery thread out just above the white part of the eye and then I'm going to go back into that same stitch and then come out above the other eye and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I leave a little bit of black yarn here so that I can um, use it as a border around the eye like this so I'm going to gently pull that should be enough and then I'm going to try and do the same thing over here and I'm going to try my best not to pull this uh, anymore but if I accidentally do it's okay we can always pull some more black um, embroidery thread out so I'm just gonna do the same thing here As you can see that's created a border on both sides and then but obviously it's not going to stay like that without you using glue so what I'll do next is I'll just get my fabric glue and I'm going to glue down that black border as best I can so I'll start with this one
it's quite fiddly you might want to use like some tweezers or something to help you but I'm just gonna let my fingers get a bit sticky so that's that I once the glue has dried a bit I'll probably get some tweezers to uh, pick off the dried bits of glue that are visible but um, I think that's probably the best I'm going to get it to look right now. So then I'm just going to do my other eye as well. I'll probably do that off camera because I find this quite difficult to do on camera. Um, and then I'll weave this black tail probably through to somewhere at the back just to make sure it doesn't show. And then I'll snip it. So that's what the eyes are now looking like. The final thing I've done with the eyes is just to add a couple of black lines either side. Um, and again, you're going to want to use probably a little dab of fabric glue to make sure that you keep the curved look. So something like this. And yeah, I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. The next thing we're going to make is this little piece of um, fluff that goes kind of on the front of the body here. So if you grab your white yarn, this is quite quick and easy to make. So we're going to start off by doing five single crochets in a magic circle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to chain one, turn, and then we're going to be working uh, in each of these single crochets all the way around again. And we're going to be increasing in each stitch. So we should have 10 single crochets at the end of, I guess these are rows really, so at the end of row two. And this should create kind of like a semicircle shape. Okay, and then you're probably going to want to pull this tail again, just to close up that hole a little bit more in the middle, as you can see. So once you've done that, just cut your yarn, leaving a little bit of the tail for sewing. And then we're going to sew that to the front of the body. I've just used a couple of pins to keep that in place, and I'm just going to be whip stitching along the top. Okay, and I'm just deciding if I'm going to leave it there to be honest I think I'm going to do a, a, maybe one or two um, stitches at the side as well because it's a bit too loose at the moment And I think those needed to be a bit further to the left, so I'm going to just unpick that. do the same thing on the other side cool 
purple so as you can see that's now sewn on but um it's still kind of left a few stitches unsewn so that you can actually see it otherwise i think it would be too flat to the body but i think i'm just going to leave it like that so that's that so the final thing that we need to do is we need to do um whatever goes on top of his head i don't know if you've seen a picture of him but i'm not gonna lie i'm not sure whether that's actually hair or a hat so i wasn't really sure how to crochet it so i've decided to make it into a hat so that's what we're going to make next so you'll be needing your light blue yarn for that so i'm just going to talk you through the rounds for the hat as it's um just standard increases and increments of six so Round one, six single crochets in a magic circle. Round two, increase all the way around. Round three, single crochet, increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 18 single crochets at the end of the round. Round four, two single crochet, increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 24 single crochets at the end of the round. Round five, three single crochet, increase. Repeat that five more times to get you to 36 sorry to 30 single crochets at the end of the round round six four single crochet increase repeat that five more times to get you to 36 single crochets at the end of the round round seven five single crochet increase repeat that five more times to get you to 42 single crochets at the end of the round round eight six single crochet increase repeat that five more times to get you to 48 single crochets at the end of the round and then rounds nine to 16 so eight rounds in total single crochet all the way around so i'll meet you at the end of round 16. Okay, so I got to the end of round 16. This is what I have. I will just finish off with a fake single crochet for neatness. So I've shown you that a few times in this video, so hopefully you know how to do that now. Just like that. And then I will just knot that yarn tail on the inside of the hat just to get rid of it. And hopefully once you've done that you should be able to put the hat on top of Quaxley and it should fit quite snugly and nice like this. So the next thing we're going to make is a little brim to go on the front of the hat so let's do that now. So for the brim we're going to be working around a foundation chain again like we have done for previous parts of this pattern. So you're going to start off by chaining uh, 15. And then stack from the second chain from hook, you're going to be just doing 13 single crochets and then an increase. Okay, so I'm doing my increase now. And then we'll start working along the other side of the chain and do the exact same thing again. So 13 single crochets and then an increase. Okay, and I'm doing my increase now. So 
So when you finish that, you should have 30 single crochets all the way around. So for rounds two to three, you're just gonna single crochet all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of round three. What we're gonna do now is sew the brim to the hat. So if you just decide where you're gonna want the front of your hat to be, it's probably gonna be the opposite side to where we finished off. And then all you're going to do is just whip stitch along to sew that down. So just like this. So I'll meet you when I've got to the end. So I finished sewing it down. This is what it looks like when I place it on Quaxley. So it sits quite nicely. I know there's a bit of a gap there, but you don't see that when it's actually on Quaxley. So I'm fine with that. You could go in and sew the, this part down as well if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like this. So I will just make sure that I knot this yarn tail on the inside of the hat too. And then the final thing that we need to do is just to add the little W shape in white onto the hat. So let's do that next. So I'm going to start embroidering the W now. I'm going to try and make it kind of line up with where the brim of the hat is. And um, I am going to try and make it sort of towards the top of the hat. So I'm probably just going to do some little stitches. I'm just going to do this until I've got a sort of W shape that I'm happy with and then I'll meet you at that point. So I've got my little W shape now. You're just going to want to make sure that you knot off the yarn on the inside of the hat and then that's it. You can just place the hat on Quaxley and then we're finished. So here's what my finished Quaxley looks like. So um, obviously you can take the hat off if you don't like the hat. You don't have to have that. You could just have them without it. And as I mentioned, I think I mentioned before, I just really wasn't sure what to do with that um, piece on top of his head, to be honest. So, um, yeah, I just decided to make it into a hat instead. But, um, yeah, and this is what he looks like from the back. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.